Hi, my name is Dr. Heather Willever farr and I'm LaSalle Special Collection Librarian. Today, I want to talk to you about sharing your honors project with the world. First, though, I want you to contemplate this question. How does your honors project connect to your academic and career goals? Besides research skills, which I'm sure you have developed in the course of doing this project, there are other skills you may have developed, such as problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, analytical skills, resilience, and time management and project management skills. And you can leverage that experience and those skills in your graduate school application or your job applications, um, on your resume and in your cover letters. Likely there are other skills that you have developed that I have not mentioned. So I encourage you to think about those skills and document them and then use them um, in your graduate school or job applications. Now your honors project clearly can benefit you, but it can also benefit others if you share it. Later in the presentation, I'm going to talk about some of the benefits to other folks if you should share your honors project um, on our online open access system called Digital Commons. Now, research can take many forms. I think we think of you know, a paper or an article, but it could be oral interviews, which would be audio files. You could have um, filmed individuals for your research project. That's also research output. It could be a presentation or even an illustration. Now in the past, most people shared their research through fee-based publishing platforms, such as journals, or they might have um, sent their book to a publisher um, and or their, um, their work could be included in databases, full text databases. In many cases, um, the journal articles, for example, would undergo rigorous peer review. So if, for example, I'm a medical researcher and I wanna submit my paper to the Journal of the American Medical Association or JAMA, um, my paper is going to be rigorously peer reviewed by experts. And if I'm fortunate enough to have it published in this prestigious journal, um, I would be very happy as a scholar, right? To have my paper published in a prestigious journal um, would be very important in terms of maybe tenure or my advancement in my profession. The one hunch though, and the one obstacle associated with these fee-based platforms is the fact that um, you have to pay a fee of some sort. You have to subscribe to the journal um, or the library has to subscribe to the journal um, in order for you to access it. It's also the case that there was, there's fairly restrictive copyright um, around reuse of those um, accepted articles or papers. Now with the advent or the introduction of the World Wide Web, you also saw the rise of open access publishing platforms. And these usually contain original research output, but there is no fee. They're available to anyone who has access to the internet. And they also usually include fairly generous copyright licensing so that it's easier for folks to reuse that research output. Now, some of these platforms are peer reviewed and others are not. So how does open access publishing benefit students? Well, it makes your research available to all in the LaSalle community, but also outside of academia, including potential employers. It also allows students to share their work with other graduates in their program or other students in their program. And then their projects become exemplars for other students to emulate. There's also research to suggest that when students know that their work is going to be published, their work is even of higher caliber. So I mentioned earlier the Digital Commons. This is a open access publishing platform available to LaSalle faculty, students, and staff. It is a platform that can handle any formats, uh, including Word, PDF, PowerPoint, image files, and AV files and film files as well. 
and um, it includes scholarly work of LaSalle faculty, students, and staff. It also provides statistics on views and downloads of your um, uploaded material. So as I mentioned, what's in the digital commons, uh, student work, faculty research, conference presentations. We have video files, AV files, uh, um, uh, audio files. We have oral history interviews, for example, that have been uploaded by students. Um, we also have digitized publications that were created by LaSalle, like LaSalle Magazine. We also have digital exhibits and digi digitized collections that you will find um, in the special collections. So here is a, um, a homepage, the homepage of the Digital Commons, and I just happen to have, this is a carousel right here. Um, so all of the different up, uh, uploaded projects um, and papers it is like a carousel. So it, you know, you keep on pushing that arrow and another people will pop up. And then it will show you who's accessing that, um, that particular article in this case or paper and where in the world um, they're accessing it from. And um, this one happens to be uh, Megan Skiles paper from classic novel to Broadway musical production and examination of little women. And um, Megan used to work <laughs> at the library. So I just wanted to show you that if you upload your material, it will be in this carousel on the homepage. So um, right before this presentation, I looked at the top 10 most popular papers in our digital commons, and that's based on downloads. And four of them are student papers. This one um, is an honors project from 2016. Americans Foreign Language Deficit and Possible Solutions, and it has over 2,000 downloads. So if you upload your project to Digital Commons, you may have a very wide readership. And of course, you also have a paper in a system that gives a URL or a web address for your paper, and you can include that on your resume or in your graduate, graduate school applications. So now I wanna give you a brief demo of, digital, of the digital commons. So if you go to the Connolly Library's homepage, you can reach the digital, digital commons by clicking on collections and then selecting digital commons. I'm not going to show you how to create an account in Digital Commons, but you will likely have to do that unless you already have one. I will provide in, in, uh, textual instructions that include how to create an account. I already have one, so I'm going to press my account. And you would also press my account if you did not have an account yet. As you can see, I'm already logged on. It has some information about my account, and then it has various um, material that I have uploaded to the site. So if I wanna submit another research project, I, um, I would go over here on the left-hand side and click Submit Research. Now I can scroll down and find the Honors Project, Projects, right here, Honors Program, and then Honors Projects. And I'm gonna click on that. Um, in order to be able to upload a project, you need to read through the submission agreement and click this box saying that you agree to the terms. And then you click continue. Please um, ignore this uh, warning up here. Uh, it's just some maintenance that's being done on Digital Commons this afternoon, but you should not see this when you go into it. So, you have to create some metadata for your honors project. For example, a title. And you can see here, all the things that are required um, have this um, little flag. Um, it does know who I am because I've inputted that information when I created my account. If I wanted to add an additional author, I can press, press this click sign and fill this out. You do need to put a date in. I recommend you uh, select the season in which you're gonna publish this. So I'm gonna pick fall. You don't have to include a month or day, but you do have to include a year. It already knows it's an honors project. 
And um, you can select a department. So maybe you, it's a history project, so you can pick the history department. If it's a cross-disciplinary um, project, you can select additional departments. Um, you can include your advisor here, which I highly recommend, and if you have additional advisors. You can include some keywords. Those keywords um, will be associated with your project. So if somebody should use those key, one of those keywords in a search, your paper will show up in the results, search results. Here, you can select a subject category. Um, for example, I'm gonna pick arts and sciences, and I'm going to go down and pick history, and then I can um, add that. And you can see I can drill down to and pick cultural history as well. Now for this, you do need to have your abstract prepared and I recommend you do that in Word or some other word processing program and then copy and paste it into the abstract field. You can add comments if you'd like. Now you um, can upload your, your project from your local laptop or, um, or desktop computer, whatever you're using. You can also import it from a remote site. So maybe you have it on Google Drive, for example. Um, so you can do that, you can do either. It's sometimes easier just to upload it directly from um, locally from your desktop, but you can use um, sort of cloud storage as well, a cloud site. So I'm gonna upload it from this computer and then I am gonna choose the file which is in fact the honors upload instructions. Um, if I wanna add something additional, so let's say I have a presentation that I would like to add to um, this project, I will click here, the additional files, and then I will submit. Now, because I chose that um, selected additional files, I will get this screen and I will choose another file to include. I need to, um, you can add a description, which is helpful, helpful visual. And then please, please select save first. Wait till it finishes processing and then press continue. Now, if I've made an error, I wanna go and change the metadata, for example, I can press this broad by submission and I can change the metadata, I can file, um, et cetera. Now I'm gonna log out. So let's say a week from when I loaded this, I want to change um, my submission in some way. I would go back into um, my account, log in. I would select the project that I want to change or the upload that I wanna change. Um, and you can see, uh, I'm gonna select best honors project. And I can go in here um, and on the left-hand side, you see a revised honors project. And I can go ahead and change, for example, the metadata or get rid of one of the files and add another one. It's the same exact process as when I first uploaded um, my project. So if you have any questions at all or any problems uploading your project, please, please, please email me. Um, I will be sharing with you all written instructions, and those written instructions include all of the web addresses you would need, step-by-step -step instructions with screen grabs, as, as well as my email address. Thank you, and I hope that you decide to upload your honors project to the Digital Commons.